Hello, tiny people living within the confines of my computer. I'm Finn, and welcome back, finally, to the world's loneliest podcast. A podcast where I'm lonely, you're lonely, and somehow we still talk together. Um, I haven't recorded an episode of the podcast in a month. Um, part of that being due to a surgery, part of it being due to some family issues, and, uh, I'll get into all that, but I'm excited to be back. I know I don't sound like it, but that's because it's 4 a.m., and everyone's asleep, and I have nowhere to record other than this random closet. So, bleh. Sorry if my energy is not as high as usual. To start, I got, I got my wisdom teeth removed, uh, and alongside that, there was another tooth that was messed up. So, long story short, I had three wisdom teeth. Uh, one over here, one up top, and then one on the bottom over here. Uh, and that wasn't the problem. The problem is I had an extra tooth that had been fucked up. Because over here I had a tooth that I never ever grew. It never came up. So then, the one on top of it was growing down extra. And it grew down and then turned and was lodged where the four roots of the tooth were lodging up into, like, another tooth. Uh, so I had to have all of those removed shortly after, uh, having a bunch of fillings done, and that was only, like, two weeks after, um, getting, like, caps put on teeth, and that was only a month after getting, like, uh, something done to my gums, I don't know what you'd call it, but that was fun. Uh, one, one sec. This is, this is only the stuff I have a month later, well... Three weeks later. This is the three weeks later stuff. This isn't all the stuff I had. I had two more different pills. I had a a secondary, like, rinsing thing. And I had a liquid I had to take. So I was taking all that, and I'll put this up and then explain it. So, um, I go, I get the surgery, and, uh, I'm being pumped, uh, with an IV, uh, I have, like, a, a gas being put into my into my face, and then I have my IV going, uh, and I pass out, and according to everyone who saw me, I didn't talk all day afterwards. Uh, like, a lot of people afterwards, they're all loopy, and they say stuff that sounds funny. Apparently, I didn't say anything. Uh, for, like, the first day and a half, I was just mute, no speaking. Um... Which isn't irregular. I go nonverbal naturally, so being in pain, it makes sense that I would also do that. Um, But the hard part was uh, not having solid food sucks, and anybody who gets, like, a dental thing done knows that not being able to eat food is awful. But um, I lost a lot of weight. Uh, I don't know if it shows. I've gained some since. But I was about 162 162 pounds in that range, uh, and when I started being able to eat solid food again, I was 139, so I lost a lot of fucking weight, um, and so much so that, uh, these pants behind me don't, no, these ones fit, these don't fit me anymore, you can't really tell they're two different, there it is, those don't fit me anymore, uh, because my, my waist has gotten so much smaller, like, I, I've, I'm, I've always been, like, it's not like I have much of a belly to begin with, but it's like, it was out, like, to here, and now it's just gone, so fuck me, and how long it takes me to gain weight, um, but I got really fucking sick, um, I threw up a lot, uh, explosive diarrhea, lots of pain through here, during this, my cousin had, like, a guess you'd call it like a like a freak out and in this freak out he just jabbed his head directly into my jaw two days after I had the surgery so that fucking hurt a lot um but yeah it sucks it still hurts because there's just a giant hole back here well there's one over here and up there but the one over here I don't really notice the one up here hurts a little bit but this one because it was two teeth beside each other, uh, and one of them, um, trying to think, no, it was two teeth up top, 
No, it's two on the bottom. Because there were two wisdoms and then the one that was turned. So the two teeth on the bottom made a hole that's real wide. And the stitches came out like a day after getting it done. And now stuff just goes down and slams on that nerve. And that hurts a lot. Like I'll, I'll like be eating not even something that's like hard. It'll be like... A, it's like if I bite into, like, a tortilla with beef, somehow, like, a piece of tortilla will nail that nerve and I'll freak out. Because it, like, it, st it stings, like, whenever... An Have you ever, like, hit, like, a nail and it go into, like, your hand? It feels like that, but in my mouth. Uh, and I already have uh, dental and, uh, like, gum issues, so having that pain is not cool. My face still isn't perfectly even, my eyes have never been. Don't look at them. They're one of them's lazy. Take that one. But uh like my cheeks aren't the exact same size. This side is ever so slightly still a little baby bit swollen. But I can talk now, I can eat now, which is cool. Um But yeah, the whole dental thing is sucked ass. Um Also that, that liquid that I had it, it, when it goes in, it just burns. Uh, and apparently, because I, I, two of my cousins got their wisdom teeth done like a month before me, I was like, is this stuff supposed to hurt? And they were like, no. Um, so that's how we learned I'm allergic to mint. I'm allergic to mint, um, which I didn't know. But I've been, I've always been a weirdo where like I'd brush my teeth and then my eyes would water. Apparently it's because I'm allergic to mint. It only took 18 years to figure that out. So that's, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's like awesome. Um, I, I think that's all I have to say on the tooth stuff. I think I'm going to get into other topics now. Yeah. So to start, it's time to talk about my dad because I am, I notoriously don't like my father. So, you know. Maybe, maybe I'm going to talk about that here. Um, if you're in the community Discord, which if you're not, you can go to the description and it'll be down there. Uh, you'll know that I have a rough history with my dad and me and him are not friends. And I've got some fucking shit to rant about, about this fucker. So, starting off, I got this dental surgery done, but I had one about a week before. And the one that week before, I went and I left and I was a bit drowsy. They didn't do too much. They just did some fillings. So it's not like they put me to sleep, but they did like use some, some laughing gas on me. Uh, so I was loopy. And then this doofus decides I'm driving on the main highway uh, like five minutes after this. It's like, yeah, you just got out of... Like, being on some, like, drugs that, like, fuck up your head. You're driving now. Go ahead. You can't go. Go ahead. Drive. Because that was really smart. Um, then, because, of course, there's more. Uh, the next morning, because I don't remember the first day. I have no clue of anything that happened. The next morning after the final surgery. Because uh, I don't know what happened that day, really. Um... Next morning, I go in there and I'm like, yeah, where are my, where's my medicine? Because I was hurting, like, really fucking bad. Uh, because that morning, I woke up and my mouth was just full of blood and there was blood on uh, my pillow. And I was like, yeah, where's my pain meds? I cannot handle this. Um, and he... He gave me, like, my morning dosage, which was, like, it's, like, one... I'm supposed to take it... that At that time, the pain pill, I was taking... Well, yeah, I was taking one every six-ish hours, and this is 5 a.m. So he gives me the one, and then he takes them with him to work on purpose because he thinks that I'm going to take all of them and be a pill popper, uh, which is hilarious considering he is the, like... He's the reason I don't do drugs, funnily enough, is because of how many he's done and how it's fucked up everything. But he thinks that I'm going to go and do that because he does that. Um, 
which sucked. And then it wore off at like 11 and he wouldn't be home until 7 p.m. So I just had to sit in pain for, you know, eight fucking hours. Uh, and then because I couldn't eat solid food, I had to eat a lot of like just stuff that I could pop in there and let it fall back, like jellos, puddings, ice cream, stuff like that. Uh, but at a certain point, that stuff hurts you. You can't just eat that. Um, and all he would get me is like ice cream and shit. And it's like, cool, I know I can't eat, but like, I can't, I can't survive on nothing but fucking ice cream. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I, I can't live off of that. There's nothing in it. Uh, but that fucking sucked. And then, I'm recovering. Not recovered, not with a D, recovering. Still very in pain. And he randomly says, hey, you want to drive me? And he doesn't say where, he just says, hey, do you want to drive me? And I was like, fuck it, sure. Uh, anytime I say, he says, do you want to do this, period, or question mark, it doesn't mean, do I want to? It means, you're gonna do it. It just depends on how long it's gonna take you to say yes. Because if I say no, then it's, well, actually, here's what you are, and it just keeps going. Um, but I drove him. Meanwhile, I can barely, like, maneuver my jaw, but, you know, fuck me. Um, driving... And he doesn't tell me where the fuck we're going. He just tells me directions. And we drive, well, I drive, two fucking hours in the dark with no license on a truck that is not mine. Well, like, it's mine, but, like, illegally it's not. To go pick up his girlfriend, who is doing drugs, and left because he's an abusive asshole. Put a period. So we get all the way out there, and I'm not happy, but I'm out there, and we're picking her up, I guess, and on the way home, we stop at a gas station to get gas. He goes into the store, and I get a call from my grandmother, the person who owns the place I live and the place where he lives, um, and she had no fucking clue we were gone. Uh, nobody said anything to her. I thought he did. He didn't say anything to her. He didn't say where we were going, and then when she called him, he purposely didn't answer it. Uh, reason why she had told him not to bring this girl back to her home which he would do three more fucking times uh, which then got me in trouble alongside getting him in trouble which made me feel fucking awesome because I love getting in trouble for stuff that I have no clue what the fuck is wrong with it uh, then uh, when I told him that she had told me that he said that she never said that to him but then she showed me proof of her telling that to him. Uh, so then he lied to me about it. Um, then we get home, and he goes on a rant. Uh, a very loud, very aggressive, almost physical rant. Uh, it, almost physical. It doesn't get that way, but it almost is. Uh, towards his girlfriend and his sister. Uh, calling them both addicts and talking about their issues and da, da 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 Meanwhile, he has all the same problems. He's a hypocritical asshole. Comma. So much so that my aunt ran away. We'll go back to that plot point. Um, but yeah, there's that, uh, which is fucking great. Um, especially when it's your idea to bring them here and then you're gonna just hurl everything at them when they are currently trying to fix it. Um, so that's fucking great. Um, he then changes his rant whenever they explain that they aren't on anything to him talking about them lying all the time. He lies all the time. Hypocritical asshole. <laughs> then, because of course, his bullshit is not over. This girl leaves again because she's tired of his shit. I go with him to Walmart. And on the way back, he gets pulled over in my vehicle without... He doesn't have a license or anything. He's actually on suspended. He can't have one yet. Um, but he gets pulled over in my vehicle. Um, and then also the owner of my vehicle, my grandmother, the one that he lied to already he proceeds to not tell her 
But then I go to tell her because I'm like, hey, just in case the insurance changes or blah, 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 because I don't know how that shit works whenever your car gets pulled over. Uh, but like, yeah, we got pulled over. And then I explained he was driving and da, 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 and I gave her all the details. And she said, he hasn't told me. That was a week ago. He still hasn't talked to her about it. Uh, so I, I love that he gets mad at somebody for lying. For him to go and be a hypocritical asshat, be a liar, and not only lie about something that is, like, personal, but also about something that is, like, a legal issue. Uh, so that fucking sucks. And then the next day, he leaves. He takes my truck to work, even though he has a work truck that he... He drives my truck to his work truck and then leaves my truck there all day and drives his truck off. So I don't know what the fuck he has my truck for. But, uh... He has... My keys are on, like, a... Like a metal thing that, like, clicks in like that to pull the things off of it. Um... And somehow he lost a key. None of the keys are by themselves. It's like, this is a ring, this is a ring, this is a ring, and there's stuff on each of them. On the third ring, there's two keys and, like, a key fob. Only the key is, only the key to the truck is missing. Everything else is still there. How the fuck? You don't drive it to work. How do you... You know what I'm saying? It makes no fucking sense. And then he didn't tell me. My grandma told me. But he never said anything to me about it until after everything was fixed, uh, and not even really fixed, uh, replaced. And it wasn't him that replaced it, it was her. So, I mean, fuck him. Um, then, day before yesterday, because, yeah, this is coming out today, so this is Friday. Wednesday, um, no. Tuesday, he tells me I'm going to work with him. Doesn't ask. Tells me I'm going to work with him. Then, I'm like, okay, fuck, I guess I'm going to work with you. So I get clothes ready and stuff, and Wednesday morning, I wake up before everybody. I wake everybody up, telling them all their shit, get their coffee ready, I'm ready to go. I sit down and start writing for a, for a video, meaning I'm completely conscious, and this is at like 7... 15, 7.30 is when I'm writing. I'm still writing. At about 8 o'clock, I go out, and I look around, and my grandma leaves for work at like 7, so I know she's been gone. But my dad, I'm expecting him to be there because I'm going to work with him, or so I was told. And then he is already gone. Uh, and I was like, okay, cool, fuck you. I mean, it's not like I built a schedule around it and then told everybody to leave me alone and then prepared myself for it and, you know, I'm autistic, so I run on a schedule, so I you know, all this. Um, and then whenever I told my grandma about this, because, of course, I was gonna, I can't bring it up to him yet, he's not home. Uh, I told it to her, and she was like, oh, he told me that he checked on you and you were asleep. But I... I wrote for a video, wrote a giant Spider-Man fanfiction thing, and recorded a video between 6.40-ish and about 8.15. That's what I've been doing, is that stuff. And they all have timestamps on them. The recording, which I've already posted, but I have the recording on, tells me that it was recorded at like 7.45. The Reddit thing I posted, I posted it at like 8.04. But then he says he came in and checked on me and that I was asleep and then he left but he never knocked on my door or said anything or checked on me uh, so then he lied about that which was fucking cool and then he continued to lie about it uh, and then whenever I brought it up to him to his face he just said I was wrong it's like I just showed you a thing that says that I was like I posted this at that time it's like I and then this recording, I, how the fuck would I be asleep if I was taking a video or writing something? And then I, I texted people about it, like on Snapchat and shit, there's like no, like things of when I, but then apparently I lied. Um, but 
because I don't want to punch my screen, I'm going to stop talking about him. <laughs> Choose something else. What can I talk about? Wrestling. Little, little wrestling brain. Dude. Dude. Okay. To start, Clash at the Castle. Banger pay-per-view. Uh, AJ Styles and Cody had a banger I quit match. I... The thing about that match is the match is really good. Cody's mom is in the crowd. The whole point is the loser says, I quit. So if they weren't going to do a thing where AJ threatens Cody's mom, why was she a plot point? Because she, she's a plot point to the match, but she doesn't do anything, and nothing is done to her, and she doesn't say anything. But they put emphasis on her and, like, put the camera on her and stuff all the time. They even tease it. They AJ goes over to her and is, like, yelling at her face. He's, te he's like, teasing the idea of attacking her. But they never do it. So I don't know what the point of that was. But it was a good match. Especially the, uh, the fucking... I'm trying to think. The, the spot AJ jumps and is getting ready for a phenomenal forearm. And his arm is just coated in chain. Uh... And then Cody just lobs a fucking chair at him and he falls. That was fucking sick. Dope spot. Um, the tag, the triple threat tag match was fun. I'm a fan. Um, Alba, Fire, and Isla Dawn, they got the dub uh, in Scotland. Uh, and it was fucking sick. Fun match. Uh, a lot of botches on this show, actually. Uh, all of which had to do with the the ropes, and everybody's like, there was an issue with the ropes, so, to everybody who got embarrassed by the ropes, I apologize, and I'm sorry that people are assholes online, um, but, that match was fun, uh, Shayna Baszler, surprisingly, kinda carried the match, which was fucking sick, shout out to Shayna, um, then we had, this probably isn't the order, but I haven't rewatched the pay-per-view, Triple threat between, uh, nope, that was, uh, Crown Jewel. Uh, I guess I can go back to talk and talk about Crown Jewel after this, too. But, uh, yeah, Clash of the Castle, it, um, next match is Chad Gable and Sami Zayn. Fun match, of course it is. Both of them are insane and really fucking good at wrestling. Um, Chad versus Sami was an absolute banger. Um, during the match, Chad kept trying to get Otis to, to hurt Sammy, and that ended up causing uh, a lot of distress. At a certain point, Sammy is in a ankle lock from Chad, and Chad is uh, just cinching it until Sammy rolls, tossing Chad into a nasty chop block into the back of Maxine's leg. Hits her, she like buckles immediately, and then Otis takes her and leaves. Um... But, uh, Chad hitting Maxine led to, uh, led to Akira, Maxine, and, um, Otis leaving, uh, and then, as Gable's kind of, like, what, paying attention to that, a luba kick, one, two, three, he loses, and on the way out, Sammy kind of gives him a little, telling him he has no more chances at the title, uh, which I thought was good storytelling. And this next Raw is a banger. Um, women's Championship, Bailey versus Piper Niven. Uh, with Chelsea Green. Uh, Bailey wins by a pinfall in a pretty good match. Um, there's a nasty spot. Um, it's Bailey leaping for like a leg drop through the middle rope onto Piper, and it, it was nasty. It was nasty. And then, uh, Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest in a match with the Judgment Day are apart from ringside, meaning they're not allowed to be there for the prettiest world title in wrestling. I'm gonna see if I can get that to show. Look at that. It's so pretty. Look at that belt. Who? It's not actually the best one. I'd, I'd probably say AEW has the best world title right now. But, uh, fun match. Um... These two have real chemistry. I think they're both really good wrestlers, and I think they have good chemistry together. Uh, the match itself was pretty good. Um, there's a spot 
that could have cost Damien his career if it went too bad. He was going for a tope, which is, uh, I don't know if a tope, it, it is a tope, but I don't know if a tope, tope did directly to, means God, this. Uh, he like, there's three ropes and he runs and steps on the first one to jump over. But instead of jumping, his leg got caught between them and wrapped up and his like shoulder bashed against the metal of the ring apron. If his leg was like slight, if his leg was like two inches shorter, he could have just paralyzed or like right to the neck and shit. So thank God Damien Priest is seven feet tall. <laughs> um, like I said earlier, there were a lot of spots where the ropes were an issue because they weren't tightened correctly. Um, but other than that spot, the match was really good. And honestly, they played the spot well because Damien does it and then Drew like is clobbing him with, like, chest shots, uh, to make it look like it was planned, um, but as that's happening, uh, Priest is locked up, and then there's a spot where the ref gets bumped, and Drew nails Priest with a claymore, his finish, which is pretty, one of the best finishers in the world, he just runs and fucking clops your head off with his foot, um, but Damien's down. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're, the ref's down. The ref isn't there to count it. Uh, and as we get to, I think, the count of six, maybe it was either six or eight, a ref finally gets in one, two, and then they stop. And the camera pans from behind to in front. And it's CM Punk. CM Punk came just to fuck with Drew. Drew gets up, grabs him, forces him into the corner, and is yelling at him. Uh, and CM Punk, being a not bitch, just nails, just nails Drew, just right in his big Scottish balls. Just a nasty kick. He then, like, fell back and took a South of Heaven, which is just a choke slam. And lost one, two, three. Um, big building. I'm excited. Um, this is just building more and more on CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, which I'm happy about. I love those two. And having them fight it out is going to be great. I'm one of the people who pointed to Drew during the pandemic and was like, that's, that's the guy. He's the guy carrying TV. Um, but that was fun. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I want... You know, I'll talk about King of the Ring. King of the Ring was fun. Uh, we got a triple threat between uh, Sammy, Chad, and uh, Bronson. It was a good match. Ended with Sammy winning, which is what should have happened. The triple threat should not be where uh, Chad beats him. I think Chad should have beat him at Clash the Castle, but that didn't happen. Uh, maybe they'll have a third match. Well, fourth somewhere. Third singles. Uh, I'd be happy if they did, because Chad should be champion. Um, alongside that, there was... Oh, Liv Morgan versus Becky Lynch for the world title, uh, which Dominic Mysterio accidentally helps Liv Morgan win by sliding a chair in, trying to help Becky, but instead... Liv got to the chair first, uh, and then won the title, one, two, three, and then everybody's like, Dominic helped Liv, he's, uh, betraying Rhea, which I'm excited about this storyline going forward, yay, um, on this pay-per-view, we had a banger between Logan Paul and Cody Rhodes for the WWE Championship, good match, fun frog splash, crazy seeing, uh, Cody be so resilient to the to the punches with the brash knuckles. Uh, um, and then we had Queen of the Ring and King of the Wing. King of the Wing. Uh, Queen of the Ring, Nia Jax, who, spot of the year, spot of the entire fucking year. Uh, Valkyria is in the corner, and Nia's like hitting her. And they're setting up for like a powerbomb spot to Nia. And then Nia just jumps back and just fucking... He, Here's Valkyria, here's Nia, and Nia is a big fucking woman, huge woman, <laughs> just, just 
legs up, complete sit down on the chest, just compress her shit. One, two, three. Naya is your queen of the ring. Uh, crazy spot. Spot of the year. Best fucking single spot. So fucking good. Um, later on in the night, we had Randy Orton versus Gunther in an absolute fucking banger in which uh, Gunther wins. Um, but there was a bit of controversy as uh, Orton, one of Orton's shoulders wasn't down for the pin, which was confirmed to not be... Like, so that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, that was a botch. Uh, and I think it was Triple H that was like, we're not gonna talk about it. And then everybody on commentary talked about it. Um, I think that's all I care about talking about from pay-per-views. I think I'm good on that. Guess we can get to Raw. Uh, Raw after Clash at the Castle was fucking crazy. Um, the show started. The start was the return of Seth Rollins, who came out, and then, uh, said he wanted to go to Money in the Bank, and then instead, Damian Priest was like, actually, what if, uh, what if me and you just have a match at Money in the Bank? So I'm excited for that program. They're having a fun back and forth every week on TV, and it's making me happy. Also on this show, we got some qualifying matches. As of today, the qualifiers... For, I can't name all, I can look it up, hold up. One moment. One momento. I need to figure out who is in the matches, my friend. Money in the bank. Qualifiers? Yeah, I need to know who's in it. Not 2023. 24. Okay, this might take me a sec. Currently in the women's match, uh, the only names that are 100% for sure are Chelsea Green, Io Sky, and uh, uh, Lyra Valkyria. Those are the three that are currently in the women's. Um, I can't, they keep changing which people are going to be in matches, so I don't know which women are going to be in it. Um, if I had to predict who's going to win, it's either going to be Chelsea Green or uh, Tiffany Stratton. It's going to be one of those two. Uh, on the men's side, currently the list is uh, Carmelo Hayes, Jey Uso, Chad Gable, Andrade, and then uh, this today, as this comes out, we have a match on SmackDown. It's a uh, I have stuff pulled up, but it's not the men's, because for some reason it only has the women's info on it. Uh, we have LA Knight versus Logan Paul and... Fuck. LW... Uh, Santos. And then I think we have... Yeah, here's... Yeah, more women's match. Uh, Jade Cargill, Candice LeRae, and Tiffany Stratton will be fighting. Uh, that one's confusing, because I think Tiffany's winning the whole thing, but also Jade won't be in the match if Tiffany wins this. Uh, and then the other one on here is Blair Davenport versus, uh, Andy Hartwell versus Naomi. I would assume Naomi's winning that, but I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so far, Money in the Bank's looking fun as shit. Money in the Bank is looking fun. But, uh, now, uh, let's get into what happened on, on the last couple things that happened on Monday. Uh, number one... Drew McIntyre quit, he walked out, and then he quit, and then he walked back. Uh, but as he left, we got to see the backstage area, which was setting up for later, and then at the end of the show, it was the triple threat between Bronson, uh, Braun, and uh, Chad, Chad wins, and then Chad, uh, no, no, that's this week's, last week, uh, Jey Uso won his triple threat match. Um, against Finn Balor and I can't remember who it was. Fuck. I'm sorry to whoever it was. I forgot. But, uh, that happened. It's storming outside. Uh, but as Jay is celebrating, the lights all dim, and we got introduced to the light six, uh, which is 
the, the coolest debut for a stable ever. My favorite group in wrestling is probably The Shield, but this is a way better intro for a group. It was destructive. It showed them taking people out. They killed Chad Gable. <laughs> they fucking murdered him. He had a fucking bullet wound in his skull. Uh, <laughs> but that was, that was sick. Very fun. Um, if you're in, if you like horror stuff, uh, if you like wrestling or horror stuff, go watch the Wyatt Six debut. It's so fucking good. It's it's not built like a wrestling thing. It, it's it's built like a horror, like a scene out of like a. It, it's kind of built like a like a Rob Zombie sort of horror movie scene. It's so fucking good. And then it was followed up on Raw the next week, uh, where Bo Dallas was interviewed by Uncle Howdy. So he interviewed himself, and like the pretty much the only real question was, how did it feel to have your brother die? Which hit really fucking hard, as we all love Bray so much. Um, but that was sick. On SmackDown, we had more qualifiers. Um, we had CM Punk helping... Cody Rhodes chase the bloodline with bats. We had Paul Heyman uh, talk about leaving the bloodline and going with Punk. Uh, we had Solo tell Paul Heyman Roman's not coming back, uh, which caused Heyman to have a fucking nervous breakdown. Uh, um, fuck. They set up something. I'm chops. I'm messing up. Uh, L.A. Knight got his ass <laughs> punched in the back of the head by Logan Paul after some issues with Santos, which is building to their triple threat, which should be happening later today. Um, they built they built some woman's thing, and I can't remember it, and now I feel bad. But uh, Drew McIntyre, uh, there's a point where the a garage door opens backstage, and then Drew McIntyre comes in with a bloody CM Punk on his shoulders, his hands covered in blood, he gets him down, he walks through the entire backstage area, drops him in front of the Chicago crowd, which is Punk's hometown, he then uh, steals a bracelet from Punk that has his wife's name and his dog's name, uh, and that was fucking cinema, uh, it was awesome, and then... I believe that's how the show ended. I you I don't watch SmackDown uh, in in a, in like one sitting anyway, so I don't really know. But that's how SmackDown went. It was fun. I promise this is the last the last wrestling part. You I promise. Uh, but um, on yeah, I don't have anything else to talk about on Raw really. Uh, more qualifiers. And then, uh, that's where Valkyria was qualified. And then, Drew came out with the bracelet and was like, Yeah, punk, you fucking suck. By the way, your wife and dog are with me. That's pretty much what it was. Um, not that there was nothing else built, really. Because Chad tried, uh, getting back with the Alpha Academy, which didn't work. Which then caused him to be, uh, talked to by, uh, Creed Brothers. And, uh, what's your name? Oh, what's her name? I'm so bad at names, and I feel like a jackass. The Creed Brothers and Ivy Nile. Uh, they came up to him and were like, Hey, man, you okay? Because he's been getting his ass beat by fucking supernatural monsters for two weeks. Um, speaking of, he was cleared to wrestle after having, like, a bullet wound or, like, a hammer smashed into his head or something. Like, obviously, it's fake, and that's, like, in the storyline, but, like, they're just like, yeah, you could you could wrestle this week, even though you have a fucking bullet wound. Uh, I'll be done with wrestling, I promise, I'll be done, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Uh, God, it's hot as balls, one moment. One moment, stop looking. In other news, I like Spider-Man, uh... And I've been writing for Spider-Man for a very long time, and I have this, like, cinematic universe I'm doing with movies and shows and tie-ins and other characters uh, in a way that I am, like, practicing is by going on 
r slash spider-man and finding uh, topics and writing about them like just improving shit and sadly sadly people on reddit are fucking stupid people on the internet are, in the world are fucking stupid um I'm going to start with the, the rant part of this and then get to the stuff that I'm happy about. Uh, on the rant end of things, I made a post talking about how there being spider people stronger than Peter makes Peter better. Like, uh, Miles. I think Miles is way stronger than Peter. He has invisibility. He has a heightened version of the spider sense. He's probably faster. He's not a smart. Uh, he's got the fucking bioelectricity. And because of having other spider people around him at a young age, he's going to learn to do stuff better and quicker. Um, and I talked about that, and I was like, I, Miles being better, in heavy quotations, because Peter Parker's my favorite character ever. So, like, I don't like Miles more, but he is stronger. Um, and... Other characters like that, like Miguel O'Hara having more powers and being stronger, or uh, Hobie Brown, or uh, Cindy Moon. J there's just a bunch that are stronger than him. Uh, and I made the point that those people being stronger than him is a good thing. It, it makes him a better Spider-Man. Because Peter Parker isn't a great superhero because he's the strongest or the fastest. It's two things. It's how smart he is, because he's the smartest motherfucker around. But it's also his heart and his soul and how close to humanity he is. If Spider-Man is a god, he's not Spider-Man. If Spider-Man doesn't have... Spider-Man can die from being shot in the head. The Hulk won't die from that. Thor won't die from that. Hell, a, most, like, regular, like... Captain America can take a gunshot to the head and it happens like that's happened before. Spider-Man is, especially Peter, is a perfect superhero because he's just human. Yes, he has powers, but he's like the closest to human imaginable. I think, I think Spider-Man's relationship with the average person is so important to that character. And it's also why I like so many different Spider-Men. I like there being females, males. I like there being whites, Mexicans, blacks. Uh, fuck. Cindy Moon being a, an Asian in like 99% of the adaptations of who she is. Uh, and I love that because the, the Stan Lee quote is the, uh, it's like paraphrasing. It's like the, the heart of Spider-Man is the fact that anybody can imagine being Spider-Man. Uh, and I think that's beautiful. And I brought up that him being weaker than his uh, protégés and his replacements makes him better because he has to use his brain, because he has to use his determination, because he has to use his humanity. And him being weaker makes him even more relatable because, like, the average person doesn't relate to being the strongest fucking in existence. You just don't. And if you say you do, go punch fucking Nate Diaz. I dare you. You know what I'm saying? But Peter's my favorite. And I, I talk about that throughout the post. I'm like, yeah, Peter Parker's my favorite Spider-Man and I want other spiders to be stronger than him because I think it makes him better. And then I got two positive comments. There's 40 comments total. Two of them are positive. The other 38 are, You're the reason Spider-Man's a bad character, and Marvel Editorial listens to shit like this, and 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 this is woke bullshit, and, and Miles should never be stronger, and, and this and this and this. And then there's people who go, So Miles has invisibility and a heightened sense, and also bioelectricity. And you want him to also be stronger? No, I want that stuff to make him stronger. He, he's already fucking stronger. If you take away gadgets, and you just put them in a fucking one-on-one -on -one fight, Miles is stronger. Peter will win because he's older, smarter, more experienced. But Miles is stronger. 
that it's not even like a cho- like a thing of like, oh well, I think Miles is stronger. No. The fuck? It's like Peter has bigger feats, but he's also been around for sixty fucking years. Miles has existed for like thirteen. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's, it's like, well, Miles has only done this, and Peter's done that. Yeah, but Peter's been doing this for 60 in real life years and has hit his peak like 18 separate times. Miles hasn't even like gotten like a quarter of the way to where he will be. Like it makes, it doesn't fucking, it, uh, people, and then I was like, yeah, I think there's too much bigotry in like comic books. And that doesn't mean that I think there's no black superheroes or women superheroes or anything. I don't think that at all. There's plenty. Uh, I think there's bigotry in comic book fans. uh, Because it's like, oh, well, Peter's better because I grew up with him. It's like, yeah, I agree with you. I I grew up with Peter. He's my favorite. But also Miles is stronger. It's like, he's my favorite and I think he is the best. Cool. I agree with you. Also, fuck Miles. I don't agree with that part, actually. That's not something I agree with. Why, people? People, why? But yeah, that sucks and upsets me. Why's my mask uneven so much? Just be even. You like Russian Spider-Man? Uh, speaking of Spider-Man, I have had two Spider-Man videos go out. And they've done. Okay. Uh, The first one is approaching 400 views. So thank you to everybody who watched my Venom video. And then uh, the second one, which is my one about why Spider-Man should be friendly neighborhood, isn't doing quite as good. Go watch it, please. If you like Spider-Man, you should go watch my Spider-Man video about why he should be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You should do that. It made me happy. Please. Please. Uh, uh, later today or tomorrow, I should be recording another Spider-Man thing. So, hell yeah. Um, yes, that's the Spider-Man news. Ooh, Spider. Mm, Spider-Man. I'm gonna stop being a little queer. I gotta stop. It's so hot. I'm going to die. This closet's really warm. Uh, it's time for the part of the, the show where I just shout stuff out uh, to begin in the description. Uh, there's two. There should be two links. Uh, there might be more. I might decide to put other things down there, but they should have a marking of what they are. Uh, the first, maybe is uh, the Community Discord. Go to the Community Discord if you want to talk to me, my friends, if you want to talk to other people who watch this stuff, maybe you'll find some true friends along the way. Uh, We talk a lot in there. There's rarely a day where there's not multiple conversations. Uh, So come have fun. Uh, It's real. It's genuinely been one of the most therapeutic parts of my life over the past, like, month or two. has been just going into the Discord and messing with people. I love it. Uh, Alongside that, The next thing below it is your best way of communicating to me uh, in funny form. Because on the Discord you can talk to me, but like there's like meme spots and stuff. But there's also a lot of serious conversations uh, as we want to to help each other when we can. Not that we're like, (laughs) it's not like we're donating money to one another or anything crazy. But we're like, we're friends and we try to show care for one another. Uh, but my Twitter is down there. Go follow me on Twitter at Real Friends Folly. Um, not only uh, is it a good way to get to me, it's also where all my funny shit is, including stuff that I'm not allowed to say here because of you know YouTube rules. <laughs> but uh, yeah, go to Twiddle, twiddle.com slash at Real Friends Folly. I don't fucking know. It's down there. Go look at it. I post memes and then I rant about wrestling or Spider Man or cartoons, or YouTube, or myself, or my partner, or, don't even worry about it, listen, 
I do stuff. Uh, there's also there's also a couple couple little bit slutty things. For those who don't know, despite despite this, despite I'm a lady, d despite this shit. Um, and there's some slutty shit over there. You can see my tummy. Uh, I think you can see my nipple. Uh, you can see how fat my ass is. There's some good stuff over there. There's some stuff. Uh, another shout out. Uh, shout out to my boy Emmett and Beans for being A, my best friend. Uh, B, the person who has kept me on this YouTube journey because I've been on it for almost 12 years and... God, that's a fucking lot. And there's been times where I wanted to just not do it anymore. And he has pushed me and helped me get to where I want to be with this. And has made it easier for me to continue. So shout out to my boy Ammon and fucking Beans. At Ammon and Beans. I'll have him. I'll have him down now. Uh, but yeah. I love that stuff. I need a moment to breathe. It's so hot. I thought of something I can show you guys. Hold up. Guys, I made a gun out of toilet paper rolls. Baby, 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 baby. It's my little, it's my little, it's my little, my little gun. You know how it is. If you guys didn't know, I'm one of those makeshift rednecks. I have another one. Hold up. Alright, goofy little gal. Look at this shit. Look at me with my little, my little, my little song. Think this bitch would hurt if I shot you in the face? <gasps> but yeah, I made these. <laughs> Tee hee. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> this episode of the podcast is sponsored by... What, what's the, what's the sponsor? It, it's Dell Laptops. How the, you don't have a sponsor by Dell Laptop. You just don't. That's just not a thing. You're lying. What's the sponsor? Hey, Ginger. What's the, what's the sponsor? Oh, it's, uh... Retake, retake. He's messing it up. Okay, take two, buddy. You ready? I got it, I got it. Alright, friend, you got this, you got this. Tengo cangrejos. That means she, too, has issues with stuttering. Do you have an issue with stuttering? If so, for the small fee of $49.99, U.S. dollars, of course, we will personally come to your home and fix your stutter. This man had a stutter once, but no longer after he called Stut Repair at 1-870-917-917-917 with a 100% success rate in certain cases. Stut Repair is legally required to express that this is a factually inaccurate statement due to the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act, CPSIA, and he's getting his second installment. Amava, Miss Moore, the boss who Elamai Troy Lavasa Grigalsas. For a limited time only, you can get stunt repair with a 10% discount in Arizona, Alaska, Nebraska, Ohio, the city of Air, and New Jersey when you dial 1 817 in the next five minutes and say, My st stutter is acting up. If you are a loved one who gets stutter repair and then loses their ability to speak, you are entitled to compensation. When you call, you <laughs> sign over all rights that you may have in the situation. Do not call back to complain. You will be ignored completely. If your payment is declined, we will take everything. Your house, your funds, your children. Hell, we will even make it our mission to take the last slice of Walters limited edition watchers. British Hills Tattoo. Oh, damn, I should go get stutter repair. Fuck, man. So call now and straighten out your speech patterns. And we promise you won't regret it. Probably. 
probably. Hi. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was that was hammy. That was hammy. <laughs> Remember how this is the world's loneliest podcast? I might be going insane. Just a little though. Just a little bit. You're kinda cute actually. Speaking of, so, I have been in, like, a situationship for months, uh, and I've talked about it on this podcast, um, uh, calling them my partner, or whatever, uh, little Jaspy. Little did I know, not a situationship, we've been dating. <laughs> my dumbass. My dumbass didn't know until, like week ago. Been together for like four months. I didn't figure out till a week ago. So that's fucking, that's funny. That's hilarious, really. Uh, everybody around me knew except me. My family knew and they don't like me. So that's, that's really something. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to my girlfriend. Tee <laughs> Um, due to the fact that it's been for you guys, it's been 50, 56 minutes. For me, it's been almost two hours because I've been pausing because it's too hot, planning bits, trying to figure out what to talk about without making this boring. Um, it's also the first episode I haven't recorded outside, so that's weird. Uh, but it's almost time to wake everybody up for work and shit, so I have to go. But I like you guys, and I appreciate you staying around, and I love all of you. Take care of yourselves, and remember, it's a waste of time to to waste time, and it's t time to waste that we waste in due time when the time is wasted, when we waste our time being wasted in due time. Thank you. <laughs>